to get started. Um, Brother Carranza, you can, uh, yes, eventually, we will, we will. Eventually. <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll make sure we are together. Okay. Is it? All right, testing, testing. All right, testing, testing, one, two, three. Yes, we're live. Thank you. We want to welcome you to the Sunday Law Update, updating you on where we are in Bible prophecy as they're being fulfilled in Bible prophecy. And today we have our featured panelists, none other than the author of the book called what? National, National Sunday Law, Elder Pastor Jan Markison. Let's give him a hearty amen. Amen. Let's bring him on up. Come on up. Amen. Amen. And he's going to be talking for about 40 minutes. And then what happens is he's going to be my guest panelist. And he's here with his wife, Sweet Vanita. I had always, when I, I first heard about Jan Marcus and when I came into the church in the year 1990. And somebody offered me a book called National Sunday Law. And next thing I know, I don't know how, Pastor. Jan, I got on your mailing list, even in 1990, and I kept hearing Sweet Vanita, Sweet Vanita, Sweet Vanita, and Precious Joy, and then, and one day, I called the ministry, and I, I said, and Sister Vanita asked, answered the phone, says, is this Sweet Vanita? And she started laughing. <laughs> and they are my good friends. I have not seen them in about several years, and, you know, and I'm just thank God that Pastor Jan um, has, uh, has graciously accepted the invitation um, to do this. How many of you have never seen the book National Sunday Law? All right, and that is one of the most important books that has ever been written in the history of our people. Ellen G. White says that the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation need to be put into small books with the necessary explanations and sent throughout the whole entire world. And brothers and sisters, th this book is following the blueprint. And we want to let you know we thank God. And not only did he write the book, National Sunday Law, he wrote, he did a 16-part series called The Catholic Charismatic Attack on Who? God's SDA Church, parts 1 through 16. I've watched all 16 parts. And the thing that I really loved the most about it was when he always said, the lovely Jesus. Oh, man, I tell you, man. Oh, when he said that, just uplifting Jesus. And you know, the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We're going to ask Pastor Markison to come in your own special way. Take as much time as you want, because I got some things that are shocking for you. <laughs> well, isn't the Lord good? He's so good to all of us. And... Um, I want to again praise him that he healed me from the terrible pain in my neck for the past four or five days. I don't think the devil wanted me to be here today, but God is stronger than the devil, isn't he right? Stronger than the devil. Well, I'm going to, um, I'm wondering where did, oh, is it possible for me to put a, put a thing here so I can use both hands to do something? Okay, meanwhile, I'll be talking while he's doing that. Um, now... No. Uh, here I have some papers. I'm going to tell you what's on these papers. Page number one at the top it says, Now the tarrying time. Each of these sections I'm going to reveal and discuss what's happening in each section. The tarrying time. Under that it, call, it says the great shaking in the Sunday law. Under that next section says the great revival. Then the next one says the 144,000 and the latter rain. And then finally, the last part says probation for the world is closed. closed. And then the last one, it says home to heaven. We don't want to leave heaven out, do we? Can you imagine what it's like to go to heaven? Uh, have you ever pictured in your mind, you know, uh, Jesus coming in the sky, we picture that. And then uh, there's a great big giant chariot made out of angels. And the wings going up and down, pure angels. Big huge wheels going around angels. And this thing is, uh, this great chariot, uh, you need to put that on me now? I'm ready, come right ahead. Thank you. 
Good. Uh, so back in, oh, I, I know, you were, we were talking about the chariot that's going to take us to heaven. That whole chariot, what's it made out of? Angels. Thank you. Um, when that chariot gets into heaven, we'll get out of that chariot, and you'll see the great city, the wall, made of, and the gates made of one solid pearl, 275 feet tall. And you'll see the foundation, uh, colors of a rainbow, uh, with the names of the disciples there. And you'll see above each door, each gate, 12 gates, a name of the tribes of Israel, the sons of Israel. And when you go, you know, Jesus is going to lay hold of that huge gate made out of one solid what? Pearl. pearl. Uh, a pearl is made by what process? By suffering. These, pa these pearly gates were made by suffering. And who does that, who does that gate <laughs> represent? <laughs> that gate represents Jesus. Uh, he opens the door by, by himself. He is the door. He is the pearl. And you'll go through that gate. And when you get through the gate, you'll look around. And what will you see? Oh, look, there's the mountain of God. There's the tree of life. There's the, there's, uh, there's the angel. Look, there's Mama. Hi, Mama. We're so glad to see you. And all of our loved ones are there. And um, we're going to spend a thousand years there doing something, looking at the books of the wicked to see why they're not there. And through that, God will wipe all our tears from our eyes because we'll see by writing their books that they would not be happy there. They wouldn't be happy at all. They, in fact, the Bible or the prophet says that it would be to them supreme torture. And God's not going to torture anybody. There's been no, no eternal hell of torture. So the wicked will get what they really want. What is that? The Bible says, he that hateth me loves death. They actually love death. That's why they're trying to have parts of death now. They go and buy beer and whiskey. And because dry, by drinking it, it gets rid of their guilty conscience for a little while. It gives relief from their guilty conscience. That's what alcohol does. And that's why they drink it. Or drugs, because it gets rid of their guilty conscience just for a little while. But then they come back to normalcy again. And what do they have? They have guilt. So they've got to have more alcohol and drugs to get rid of again. And that's, uh, did you know that's why they really drink? Uh, by getting rid of that guilt, they really want death. They want freedom from that guilt. And so God will give them an eternal reward of what they really want, death. He that hateth me loves death, Jesus said. It's really true, isn't it? Praise the Lord. And so that, that knowledge will wipe away our tears from our eyes. I wouldn't want uncle so-and-so to be, not me, I'd want him to be here, but he wouldn't want to be here. He, won't, he doesn't want to be here. It'd be torture. The best thing you can do is give him what he wants. Beer gave, uh, alcohol gave it to him for a little while, but now he'll have it forever. Rest from guilt, uh, being apart from Jesus. He would, wouldn't want to be with Jesus, that'd be torture. And so that helps us to understand that hell is not cruel at all. They're actually going to fall down on their knees and agree with God. God will t announce the sentence of eternal death upon them, and they will agree with it. Isn't that something? That shows the love of God. Well, uh, home to heaven. Well, I'm going to talk about these seven factors here. 
then I'm going to tell you what I promised, the f things surrounding the uh, production of this book. Um, let, so let's go to part one. It's uh, part one, now is the tarrying time. Uh, God's p people expected to be in 1844, October 22. They were bitterly disappointed. But through dreams uh, and like uh, uh, different ones, understood from the prophet's dreams that we're in the tearing time. Jesus didn't disappoint us at all. He didn't come down to this earth. They thought it was, you know what, uh, the, uh, surrounding that, they mistook the earth for the heavenly sanctuary. And so, but now after a while they understood it. We're in the tearing time. Uh, and we're in the great shaking already. You believe we're in the shaking? Many are being shaken out even though they might sit in a pew on Sabbath, they're still out spiritually. Uh, you might wonder, why would people who don't really know the Lord come to church? Because someone sends them there. Who sends them to church? The devil does. Uh, they have a mission to go there and do the chaos that the pastor was talking about this morning. It's their commi commission to do that. But fortunately, 9228, I've read many times, it says Jesus will come again to his temple and cleanse it just as he did at the beginning and end of his ministry on the earth. Now when Jesus came to earth the first time and cleansed it, he did it twice. If you want to read about it, look in Desire of Ages, the chapter called the uh, Temple Cleansed, and another chapter later is called the Temple Cleansed Again. And read these two, and you'll, if you read these and see how he uh, got rid of the wicked people in his day, you'll know how God's going to get rid of the wicked church, Seventh-day Adventists, in our day. And when this shaking is over, there'll be very few left. Uh, here in Last Day Events, page 180, it says, The majority forsake us. Uh, who is the us? God's people that love God, love Jesus. The majority of church members, it says, will forsake us. And what will they forsake us for? By, well, let me just say this, the majority, who, who is that? Now, these uh, are, us means the virgins. There's 10 virgins. Five are foolish, five are wise. Here, it doesn't say 50% foolish. Uh, forsake us. It says the majority. That's more than 50%. I wouldn't, I, uh, in my own mind, it's a lot more than 50% because the majority, they're going to run out. They won't be willing to suffer and lose their home, lose their income, lose everything, lose their water, lose their electricity, not run their car, not who knows what. And in the face of death, they just can't take it. And so they'll become Sunday keepers. Most everybody today on Sabbath and every Sabbath sitting in church, sitting in the pew, most of them are going to soon be Sunday keepers. Somebody said, have mercy. That's right. Um, it's going to tear our hearts to pieces to see it. People we've known and loved for many years. But they are really actually revealing to the universe who they really are. Until this test comes of the Sunday law, no one knows who's who and where is where. But when this Sunday law comes, it's being, and we're in the shaking now, but when that law comes, that's the great shaking. That will totally separate the sheep from the goats. And when, when you know, uh, when a person's, it's not going to be secret. Everybody's going to do it openly. Openly honoring the Sunday law or openly resisting it and uphold God's Sabbath. <clears throat> so that will be it. And when a person chooses to go along with the Sunday law, what does he receive? In his forehead or in his hand. The forehead means you agree with it, you believe in it. And the hand it just means you do it just to keep your job, to keep your money coming in. But it doesn't matter why you get it. Uh, once a person accepts the Sunday law, they have what? The mark of the beast. Once you get the mark of the beast, will you ever get rid of it? No, there's no turning back. When a person goes that far as to openly accept the Sunday law and go with, a little, uh, with it, that's, that's it for that person. 
they reveal who they really are. And uh, yes, so the, we're in the great shaking time. Uh, here in Last Day Events 180, it says to stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us. To fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few. This will be our test. At this time, we must gather warmth from the coldness of others, courage from their cowardice, and loyalty from their treason. Uh, they might come to church a few times before they finally break and cave in. But, but, but while they, they're there, you know which way they're drifting, which way they're moving. And they finally break a full cut with God's people to go along with this mark of the beast. And it says, many a star that we have admired for its brilliancy will then go out in darkness. Chaff, you know what the chaff is, people that don't love Jesus. Chaff, like a cloud, will be, will be borne away on the wind, even from places where we see only floors of rich wheat. Thousands and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions will leave us. There's about 22 million Seventh-day Adventists, last I heard today in the world. More than half of that 22 million are going to leave us. Yes, have mercy. And so, by the way, I see that, <laughs> I see that paper coming. Uh, I, forgot, I forgot to tell you that I e every, actually every two weeks, I write a letter updating what's happening in fulfillment of prophecy leading to the Sunday law. And I send out a letter, my newsletter, once every two weeks. And um, how many of you don't get it, but you'd like to get it? Could I see your hand? Okay, wonderful. They started this paper back there. Did anyone back there miss this paper? Okay, what we'll do, where's the sister? Is it, okay, would you take it back to the back again? and give those people a chance. And these people in the back, they probably didn't know what it was for, as simply because I forgot to announce it. So my problem, my fault. Uh, also, if after the meeting is over, if anyone still hasn't been able to get it, uh, I have one of those sheets myself in my pocket. Also, if somebody later or somebody watching on the internet right now would like to get my newsletter, I'll give you the phone number of my office. You can call my office and say, please send me Jan's free uh, new newsletter, and they'll do it. It won't come by email. It'll come by the post office. And so I'm going to give you my phone number of the office. Are you ready? It's 618-627-2357. I'll say it two or three times. 618-627-2357. Five seven, six one eight. What's the next three? Six two seven. What's the last one? Two three five seven. Good. Okay. Any of you can watching or whatever can uh, can call and they'll be glad to send. I I put my whole soul into this thing. Uh, in fact, I've uh, been backing off of quite a lot of responsibility in the past three years because this letter takes all of my energy and everything. So when I'm finished, I'm exhausted. But I tell my wife, I said, my, I said I'm exhausted, but my joy is greater than my exhaustion. <laughs> I love to do it, even though it's exhausting. I just love to do it. It's like a personal letter to you. And so anyway, um, that's what these are. Then our sister, when she sees these letters, these pages are up front, she'll bring them up to me. Now let's go on with these uh, study. It says here, the Lord will work so that the disaffected ones will be separated from the true and loyal ones. The ranks will not be diminished. Do you comprehend that? This is Maranatha, page 200. This made Vanita and me very happy. Isn't that right, sweetheart? We're very happy. Let me read it again. The Lord will work so that the disaffected ones will be separated from the true and loyal ones. The ranks, that means in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, will not be diminished. Even though more than 
uh, you know, 20, the majority of 22 million people leave, maybe just a wild guess, 15 million, this is just for illustration. Just say that 15 million Seventh-day Adventists leave and become Sunday keepers. According to the prophet, at least that many or more are going to come in and join us. More than 15 million are going to come and join us. And they won't know much about uh, faith, but you're going to teach them. And uh, they, uh, in a short time, they'll learn in a short time. And you might say, well, they can't come in. We don't have room enough in our churches to hold them. That's no problem because the government will take the buildings. We don't need, God doesn't need buildings, does he? Does the buildings affect God's Seventh-day Adventist church? It doesn't affect it at all. And so don't be discouraged if they take, or if or when they take your church away, or if they take your home house away, or the schools will, uh, Oak, Oak, um, Oak what? Oakwood. <laughs> will Oakwood ever be closed down? I wouldn't dare say yes. I wouldn't dare say no. But the prophet says, our schools will be closed up. The time is coming when all schools among us, she says, will be closed up. Uh, that's an thought, amazing thought. Uh, all the buildings. Uh, now, indirectly, Rome has gotten control of a lot of things. Do you believe that? People ask me, what do you think is the main thing leading to the Sunday Law now? Back in the 80s and 90s, the devil was pushing hard for the Sunday Law. And I put all this in my newsletters. But he saw in the, by the end of the 90s, he saw that he was shooting himself in the foot because what he was doing was waking up Seventh-day Adventists to get the message to the people. And so uh, the devil s stopped that in the end of the 90s mainly and uh, he used different tactics. Now he's not, you see very little about a push for Sunday law now, maybe in other countries especially, but not here so much like in the 80s and 90s. But what is the devil doing? He's putting forth just as much effort now or more than he did before, but he just redirected it in which channel? Now what he's doing, instead of getting the pastors and preachers and people all to push that, now he was, what he's doing, he's getting Rome to have infiltrators to become mayors and governors and sheriffs and, and uh, you name it, presidents of the United States. How long will it be until there's a Roman Catholic president of the United States? Right now. Right now. I know it. I know it. What about the Congress? How long will it be till the majority of Congress is, is Roman Catholics? How about the Senate? How long will it be until Catholics rule the Senate? How about the Pentagon? They're ruling that. Every organization that you can think of, Rome has gotten control of. Not all of them, but many, many of them. Until, boy, I, I can say that Rome, right now, between now and next year, they're really fighting hard, and they don't fight honestly, do they? Uh, they're fighting real hard, and only by God's grace are we having the freedom that we have now. Uh, uh, I, I won't say much more about that, but that's what's happening right now. And it's under the table. It's behind the scenes. Uh, nobody even knows most of these people are Catholics, but they are. And uh, anyway, uh, God, why is God allowing it? Because God can see that by allowing this, it turns out for the best for his people. And that might be amazing. You wonder about that. But that's, God is always in control. Amen? Always in control. So it's many star will blow away like chaff. Yes, that's coming. That's the great shaking and the Sunday law. By the way, the Sunday law, in order to get it, there's going to be a big fight over the issue. It'll be debated. It won't come in one week. It won't come in one month. It's going to be debated, debated, debated. On, you'll see about it on TV and radio and internet. Uh, and uh, the devil has to be careful because he knows if he comes on too strong, he's going to shoot himself in the foot again. Um, all things he does not want to wake up Seventh-day Adventists to get the three angels' messages out 
He doesn't want that. So he's being careful, working behind the scenes. Now it says a great revival. It says the Lord uh, will work to, uh, to separate these from the riches and the, the um, loyal ones. And it says our ra the ranks will not be diminished. Praise God. Ma uh, it's Maranatha, Maranatha 200. Now this also is seen in the Bible. Isaiah 60, 1 to 7. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Is that happening now? And gross darkness of people. Is that the way it is now? Yes. They're gross darkness. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Then shalt thou see and flow together. Thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. You'll almost have a heart attack. As so many millions coming and joining us. And not only that, you might say, how in the world is that going to happen? Uh, there's over 6,000 languages in the world. Uh, last I heard, Seventh-day Adventists can only speak a little over 600. There's thousands of, of languages we, can't, we don't know. Not only that... Uh, we can't go. Every, the prophet said everything will be bound up. You can't just go overseas in any country you want to, uh, get on a boat or plane and get over there. No, now everything's bound up with pro visas and passports and papers and all kinds of things. Red tape you have to go through. And once you get over there, they might arrest you for being a spy. But uh, uh, the uh, you know, gross darkness that we're in now is amazing. Uh, it says, Then shalt thou see and flow together, and thine heart shall be f fear and become enl enlarged. That's the amazement we're going to have with millions coming to, coming to join us. Oh, by the way, you might say, how are we going to reach those millions? Well, on, on uh, different media, but there's one big way that God is going to use. And the prophet reveals that God does not want to use that method. He doesn't want to do it, but he's got to do it anyway to fulfill the prophecy that the, God, the Lord says that the work will be cut short in what? Righteousness. In righteousness. The word righteousness simply means to do right. Well, what would God do to do right in view of what's happening? I told Sweet Vanita the other day, I said, we're actually going backwards. There's fewer people being I'm sorry, there's more people being born each day than are dying. That means more people don't know the truth, a uh, greater percentage than, than last week or last year. We're going backwards. God has to step in and do something supernatural or else the world would just kill itself off. What is God going to do to cut it short in right doing or in righteousness? I'll tell you and you might be shocked. Is God going to send angels down here in human form and go door to door with us, knock on people's doors, and they open the door and they look up, yes, can I help you? Is God going to have angels do a work that men could have done? The answer is yes. The prophet says God will do a work that by men, or angels that men could have done. Isn't that something? But we didn't do it. Uh, back in the, night, or in the 1800s, the prophet said, we could have been in heaven ere this. Have you ever read that? They could have. If they'd have gotten the three just message to the world, it would have brought the persecution, it would have brought the fulfillment of prophecies, and it would have brought Jesus in the sky. And you and I would never be born. But they fumbled the ball. They didn't do it. And so now their crown that would have been on their heads, is it just going to perish or is it going to go on your head? Yes, you're going to get the crown. If you're faithful, that you know it should have gone to somebody over 100 years ago. That makes us feel very humble. Who am I? That person's dead. He's going to burn up in hell. And I got his crown. The prophet said, beware lest any man take your crown. Don't let any man take your crown. Because God's no respecter of persons. If you and I fumble the ball, your crown is going to go to somebody else. It's going to go to somebody. 
And how many crowns will be filled up? The number of the what? Though this prophet said those crowns will go to people who take the place of angels that fell in heaven. When that number is made up, there's enough crowns to, to uh, make up that number, those fallen angels, Jesus will come. Isn't that something? Well, let's go on here. There's some amazing things. And in my letters, each two weeks, you'll learn amazing things. Where are those papers at this time? Okay. Yes, it won't, don't do it the email, it's the post office. Thank you so much, thank you for that. Then when it comes right up here, then you can bring them up. I'll guard them very carefully. Here, let's go on here with these. Have you learned anything tonight? Well, we have ama amazing things to learn. Uh, we just read about the great revival in I Isaiah 60. Uh, we're also going to read about here, it says the 144,000 and the latter rain. Is that interesting? Yes. Oh, yes. Who is this 144,000? What is the latter rain like? Well, it's all in Joel chapter 2. Uh, what God does, uh, convert people and majority come, coming in is in Isaiah 60. Now in Joel 2, it describes the 144,000 which have received the latter rain. Joel 2, I'm going to start reading. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Why? For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. This is the way it will be to the wicked. It won't be a happy thing at all. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. That's the 144,000. As you'll see in a minute. Uh, now it says the morning spread upon the mountains. First it starts out describing the gloomy darkness. And then you look at the mountains. And as the sun comes up, does it go boing real fast? Or no, it comes up gradually, doesn't it? It comes up gradually, gradually, getting brighter and brighter. That's what God's people are going to be doing. Uh, as they continue to walk and talk with Jesus. A great people and a strong. There hath never been the like. Neither shall there be any more after it. There's no people like this group of people. It says, even to the years of many generations. Verse 3, a fire devoureth before them, and behind a flame burneth. These people are on fire for God. Would you like to be on fire for God? Well, then this applies to you. It's high honor. It says, the land is as the garden of Eden before them. They share the three angels' message. It open up like looking, give them a glimpse of the garden of Eden. It says, and behind them a desolate wilderness. What does that mean? That means that the 144,000 on fire for God are going to go everywhere sharing the truth of the three angels' messages. And some will accept it. majority will reject it. And they go to someone else. And when they turn away and go, what, what's behind them? Those people who rejected it. Those people are like a, like a what? A desolate wilderness. It's just describing the condition of the people. It says, yea, and nothing shall escape them. Uh, their, their motto is pass none by. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and horsemen, so shall they run. Verse 6, before their face, the people should be much pained. Oh yes, their pain, many give them pain to learn God's message. It says all faces shall gather blackness. They're horrified to learn about these things. It says they, uh, they shall run like mighty men, they're going door to door. We'll be going door to door, but now we know the angels of God are going to do a work that men could have done. They're going to go door to door with us. It says, it says angels in human form. You can look that up. Also, Satan's angels will also be in human form. And so a lot of supernatural things will be happening. But we don't put our trust in miracles, do we? It says here that they shall run like uh, men of war. They shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his way. They shall not break their ranks. That means they won't uh, have any schisms. They won't be gossiping about anybody. They'll be in perfect unity. Do you like that? Perfect unity, God's people. Neither shall one thrust another. There won't be any accusations or gossip. It says they, when the sword comes, they will not be wounded. 
the prophet reveals, well, uh, raise our hand in the name of the Lord and their swords fall like straw, it says. That's in early writings. Uh, and I'm going to go on here. It says, the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. There's nobody seen like this 144,000. It says, the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he, I'm sorry, yeah, your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he shall return and repent and leave a blessing behind him? Isn't that wonderful? God doesn't want to hurt anybody. He wants to give us a blessing. But those who cling to following the devil, they will get what the devil gives them, and they have no defense against him. Now the next section is called Probation Closes. There is the seven last plagues fall upon those who have received the mark of the beast. <clears throat> and uh, many of the foolish virgins will come up to the wise virgins and they'll say, uh, please, uh, brother, tell me what to do. I know uh, the Sunday law is here and I went along with it, but I didn't really mean it. Uh, uh, tell me how I can get rid of these sores all over my body. What will he tell me? I'm sorry, it's too late. Too late. That's all we can say. And well, we lose sight of those poor people. Well, now, the seventh plague is the appearance of Jesus in the sky. There's a great earthquake, but those who have not yet been killed by the first six plagues will be killed by the seventh plague, the earthquake and the hail and the coming of Jesus in the sky. They'll drop dead from the glory of, of his face. Well... In view of all of this, I woke up one early morning in December, late, late, late December of not this past year, but it was December 1982. I can take that from you now. You who? You who? <laughs> What'd you say? Okay, good. Go right ahead. So let's see now. Okay, I woke up December, or end of December, 1982. I was only half awake, and in my heart and mind, something said, someone said, write a book. Write a book? I never thought of such a thing. Um, and so I had just finished conducting a Revelation seminar in both of my churches. I was exhausted. And, and, you know, before you ever have evangelistic meeting, before you even start, you know that most of them are going to leave. You know that ahead of time. And I knew that. But when it actually happens, your heart goes out with these dear people. You've been working with them for six weeks or eight weeks or whatever. And it tears you to pieces. And you're happy for those who came all the way. But we long for those who didn't. Well, I was in that state of mind when I woke up that morning. And you know, when you wake up, you, you don't know anything or m hardly anything at first. I don't even know where I am. Uh, I say, where am I? I did this last night. And I was in a motel bed. And uh, uh, I, I thought, where am I? Uh, where am I? Who, what? And so I get my bearings. But in that condition, a voice intruded itself. I wasn't even fully awake. Write a book said write a book and I started thinking about those words write a book w what what is this and then the thought came to me write a book make the three angels messages so simple that a child can see it and I said Lord is that from you yes write a book uh, uh, who ever thought about such a thing as that I uh, you know and so but but once I kind of I knew that that must be from the Lord I even saw the front cover in my mind with the red stripe. The red stripe stands, stands for the lake of fire. On the back, there's a grid. I got that off a whiskey billboard. <laughs> and um, there's a grid on the front, too. It gives you the feeling of movement. 
and uh, I, I left it white. You know, all the books in the bookstore, they're all beautiful colors, but they all blend into each other. But if you put this in there with them, your eyes go right to that. And uh, the devil doesn't like it, but I don't care. <laughs> so what happened was I started on, I had all the references. You know, there's a bibliography in the back. I had all that material right in our house. And the, uh, all of the heavy stuff I put in the appendix. Those who want to really dig deep and know all that, it's all in these appendixes. But those who just want to, if I put the, that in the main body, they'd get bogged down, they'd put it down, they wouldn't read it all. So I keep it moving quickly, quickly. Never lose their interest. And if they want more, they look in the appendix. That, that worked very well. Um, so I started gathering the material, and uh, I wrote it, not with a computer. They, we didn't have a computer in 1982 or 83. Uh, I wrote it with a pencil. I just got an old pencil. I got a pencil sharpener that I got for five cents. <laughs> and I got a pad of paper with lines on it. That's all I had. And uh, uh, so I wrote, I was impressed to write to the Review and Herald and the Pacific Press. <clears throat> and uh, I did. And I wrote to them, because I know how people are, uh, how they think. They want it to be, you know, signed by Billy Graham or something. So I wrote to these two uh, publishing places, and, and I said, I'm a pastor in two churches here in the Florida Conference. I'm thinking about writing a book for soul winning, for soul winning. And uh, I would like to know if you'd like, when I get the first chapter done, I hadn't even started yet, I said, when I do the first chapter, would you like me to send it to you to see if you'd like to publish it? I got a nice uh, letter from the Review and Herald inviting me to send the first chapter to them to see if they'd like to publish it. I was very happy. If anybody, if, you know, if you can get your thing published in that, that's wonderful. And so I was very happy. And about a week later, God said, don't do it. How in the world could that happen? Thank you so much. Now, there's one more sheet, isn't that right? Yes. Okay, good. Um, how, how, why would God say, don't do it? That doesn't make sense. Well, I didn't know until over a year later. I learned that when you write a book and you get a publisher to publish it, you've got to sign a contract. And on this contract, guess what you're doing? You're signing this book over to them. Now, I learned that a book usually uh, stays on the shelf in the bookstores about one year, and then they rip the cover off, throw it away, and recycle the paper, and that's about the end of it. If I'd have signed that contract, right at first, people would have gotten them in the bookstores, but a lot of them are in the ABCs already now anyway. Um, uh, but if I'd have done it, nobody would have ever heard of the thing today. I couldn't make copies of it. It's not mine anymore. I could go to jail for doing that. But God said, don't do it. Now I know why he told me not to do it. Praise God. I don't have anything against the Review and Herald. In fact, later on, years later, uh, a company did get 5,000 of these printed on the Review and Herald presses. But it didn't make any difference. People didn't get more because it was that was in there. Anyway, so um, I wrote it myself. I typeset it. I did the whole cover myself by these scratch-on things. This is the original artwork by a guy that doesn't know anything. <laughs> it says, a shocking glimpse behind the scenes. I scratched it on there. Uh, same with the National Sunday Law, those words. I put red in there. Notice, notice watch, when, when I'm, I'm going to cover the red with my thumbs. And when you see it, it changes the whole book. Now, here it is the way it is now. I'm going to cover the red. Blah. <laughs> you let go of the red and it comes to life. Isn't that something? That was the cheapest way I could do it. Because there's only one color in here other than black. That's the cheapest way. The four color cover cost a lot of money, all those covers. But I didn't need all those co covers because I have that one color that is needful, representing the lake of fire. So anyway, um, now, so I wrote the book with a pencil 
paper and a pl plastic pencil sharpener. And then the time came, I'm going to watch my time because I don't want to go overtime. I'm overtime already. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, let's see, what was I going to say now? Oh, so I wrote it, and then I thought, what, how am I going to get it printed? And, and all that. I wrote it. The real reason I had in writing it because it's, was because I was working in conference evangelism. I was the associate evangelist. I would do all the singing, and con take control of all the material and all the everything set up. Plus, I'd preach and sing every night. And so... Um, I got thinking about that. How am I going to get the book out? Uh, how am I going to do it? Well, finally what happened, I took the book. Well, I finished it in May of 1983. By the end of that year, 800 of the first thousand went out. Do you have that sheet? Thank you so much. I went to a little rinky-dink rinky -dink <laughs> printer in Orlando, and I had it all typeset. The A.B. Dick Company let me, I didn't have the money, I went there, they had a, they had a word processor, because you see you've got to have the right column straight. You can't do that with a typewriter. I ty First I wrote it on paper with a pencil, then I typed it. And then uh, I went to the A.B. Dick place in Orlando and, and uh, I bought a A.B. Dick proc processor and they sold it to me, not because I had any money. I didn't give them any money. They gave me the thing and I took it and I didn't give them a penny. But they knew I was an employee of the conference, so they did it based on that. Well, I typeset the whole book and the thing broke down and I took it back to them and I never gave them a penny. Not that I wanted it to happen that way, but it did literally break down. And all I could do was return it to them. And so it was under warranty, so I had used it all I needed to anyway. <laughs> so God works wonderfully, because I didn't have the money to do anything. So anyway, here we, we see how it got done. Now, you might say, how are you going to get these books out to anyone, since it's not produced by any uh, publishing house? How are they going to do that? Well, I thought to myself, I had this thousand books that the little printer gave to me. A thousand books, there it is. And I thought, now how am I going to get them out? I thought to myself, I'm very bashful, and I forced myself to call Porter twice. I was in agony. I, I didn't like it at all, because I'm, I'm bashful with the public. Not with you, but the deck, de uh, door next door... I'm super bashful to ring the doorbell of anybody. And so I thought, what am I going to do? And so the Lord impressed me, take it and just put it on a doorstep and leave. A bashful boy can do that. If you're bashful, you can do that. Isn't that right? You can do that. And I also put them on benches, phone booths, laundromats, restrooms, just anywhere, even outside of uh, Barnes and Nobles. Oh, somebody lost a, dropped a book. People like to find free things. And so they'd go home not knowing they have the three angels' messages. Praise the Lord. People pick them up. And in the parking lots, we put them right, let's say that here's the steering wheel of the car. I put it on a 45 degree angle, just a, below the steering wheel, and I leave. And when I come out, they're gone. People pick them up because they don't want to. They don't want to litter. They put it in their car, and uh, people get them all the time. Well, uh, the, it, by the end of 1983, 800 of that first thousand had gone out just by word of mouth. I told my own two church members of my two churches everything I've just told you, especially the, about this, and um, they are the ones that got the 800 books by from May to. December of 83, they got 800 of that first thousand books. By the end of 84, they got 8,000. By the end of 85, they got 80,000. By the end of 86, they got a third of a million. By the end of 87, 
they got three quarters of a million. By the end of 88, they got over a million. And now we've been sen sending out over a million a year for many years now until God is blessed. So there's 51 million in print in 76 languages. Praise God. Now, I don't w wouldn't want to tell you that because I can't take any credit. It's God's message. And we're just little children working for Jesus. But it's wonderful to see what God does. If you're ignorant and you know what I mean and don't know what to do. Well, that's the uh, story of how that happened. And so, oh, by the way, and so uh, I would get letters in the mail from people that were accepting God's truth, God's Sabbath, and becoming Seventh-day Adventists. I threw them in a drawer, and after there was a drawer full of those letters, the Lord impressed me. Get, the draw get them out of there and send them a letter. Show them all the people are being converted and be joining the church because of reading it. And so I did that. That was the beginning of my uh, newsletter. And so God gets all the praise. Amen. God gets all the praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Amen. You know, I would like to have a closing prayer. Let's kneel. Oh, we're not? Okay, we're not finished. Okay. Okay. We're not finished, so don't go nowhere else. Amen. Can you help me move this out of the way? Because, all right. Oh, oh, he still wants to pray. Oh, okay. Well, let's kneel anyway. We're going to pray anyway as we transition. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for Pastor Jan coming on, and we want to thank you, Lord, for his wife. We want to ask you, Lord, that you would bless them in their ministry, and thank you for the blessing it's been for all of us who have been watching. And as we continue on with this update, may you bless us again as we go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, can we put a table right here? Because, Pastor Jan, we want to ask you a couple of questions. Sure. All right. Now, how many um, copies of this book? Yeah, I need them. How many copies of this book, National Sunday Law, are in print right now all over the world? 51 million. Fifth, that's what we know of. Yeah. Well, yeah, yes. yeah, that's right. It's in yes. 76 languages. It's in 76 languages. And you can have a seat right here. Oh, yeah, we got a bigger table than this. All right, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. But you can have a seat right here. You can have a seat right here. Okay. Amen. Amen. So, you know, uh, so we have... Um, yeah, if you could find a bigger uh, table. Yes, indeed. So 51 million. How much longer do you think we will be before the National Sunday Law comes? People ask me that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, all I can say is the greatest indicator that we can detect since the devil now is working underground. He's not pushing Sunday Law like he did in the 80s and 90s. Now he's working undercover to bring his girlfriend his girlfriend. Who's his girlfriend? Who's, who's Rome. It? Rome. That's right. Papal Rome is the devil's girlfriend from the Vatican. And so the devil's girlfriend is, uh, he, he is strengthening his girlfriend to be in every office you can think of of the land to control things undercover until they pass laws. And they said, oh, I'm sorry. There's a law made four, six years ago saying you can't do that. Well, they don't know that it was the agents of Rome that made that law on the books. They're doing that right now. Right. And saving these laws up so that they can use them later. Wow. So um, now, now, Brother Richard, let's go to the screen right here. Brother Richard, let's go to the screen. Um, as you see here, this is um, Pope Francis. And what, what makes him so special, Pastor Markison? Well, as far as I'm concerned, he's the Antichrist. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's the Antichrist. And, uh, the whole world is wondering after the beast. And um, did you say something, sweetheart? Oh, yes. He's the first Jesuit pope. And the pope now uh, uh, is, is giving orders or his subordinates to the President of the United States, right. who is also a good Catholic. Um, but the Pope himself takes orders from someone else, and that is from the black Pope. That's right. The black Pope is not a black, black man, he's a white man dressed in black. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, so he's the supreme Jesuit general. That's right. For all the Jesuits, and so he, in a sense, is over the Pope. 
He tells the Pope what to do. And he gets his uh, orders from Satan. That's right. You know, the spirit of prophecy, Ellen White calls the Pope the representative of Satan on That's the right. earth. Yeah. Wow. And so we just thank God for this. Now, what happens is, um, thank you very much. We want to sh show you a couple of things, Pastor Markison. Okay. And, um, and, you know, we thank God that your faithful wife is here. Now, how did you meet Sweet Vanita? Well... <laughs> He talk, he talk, I mean, when he talked about her, I said, who is this sweet Vanita person he keeps talking about? <laughs> Amen. I'm glad that you love sweet Vanita. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. How did you meet sweet Vanita? Uh, wh what was your question? How did you meet your wife? Oh, okay. Um, it was um, at Loma Linda University where I attended school. Uh, I attended school at SMC for four years. Uh, after I graduated from Loma Linda, I went back, studied for the min ministry at SMC, then got a call to the Florida Conference. But before that, I was going to be a physical therapist. And I did, I did graduate in physical therapy, and I did practice it while I was working, uh, studying for the ministry. So at Loma Linda, I went to the Loma Linda um, Sabbath School, the Hilltop Sabbath School. Yes. And... Uh, uh, Go ahead. I saw Vanita, the first time I ever saw her, she was playing the piano for the Sabbath school to sing with. And I looked at her and I thought, she looks like a real member of this, of this thing, of this Sabbath school. One of, she's a, one of the in crowd. <laughs> and that was just the impression I got. And um, so, but that was a good impression. Now, the reason, the way she saw me, uh, unbeknown to myself, was that I was invited to give my testimony at a uh, camp of some kind, and she was in the audience up on a bank. It was all outside, and I, she heard me and saw me giving my testimony, how the Lord brought me to himself. I'm a fifth-generation Seventh-day Adventist, but I haven't always known the Lord until I was 18. I'm thankful I gave my, everything to him yes. that early. So anyway, uh, I... Now, uh, another thing, how I, we met each other was I went there in the summer course. Um, it was called Gross Anatomy. In Gross Anatomy, you've got to cut people all to pieces. Not pieces, you know, but, but cut them all up and uh, learn, memorize their nerves and ver n uh, blood vessels and joints and bones and all these things. And um, so... In that class, they gave us a two-week vacation between that class and the next classes. And so I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll call Porter. And so I uh, thought, but I didn't know anybody at Loma Linda at all. I thought, I'm going to look around and see if I can find somebody to call Porter with me. Do you know what call portering is? Yes. It's selling books door to door. Um, and if someone asks if they can buy a Sunday Law book, I say, we don't sell them. We, it's all on a donation basis. Amen. Uh, anyway, uh, so I um, thought, well, I'll call Porter. But I, I didn't know where to go. I went to the two dorms trying to figure it out. Well, I was there in one dorm and uh, talking to a young man. A girl came walking up and I said, hello, do you know anyone who would like to call Porter with me? And to my amazement, she said, yes. And so I said, uh, wonderful. So she wrote a, a, a note and gave it to me, or Vanita Whitman, and a, and a phone number. And so that was Vanita. Uh -huh. Sweet Vanita. Sweet right? Vanita, uh, Yeah, <laughs> that was her. And so uh, I went home. But, you know, I was not impressed to call that number at all. Wow. I was too bashful. I just too bashful to call it. And so, but I was doing something, and I was about not, quarter after nine at night, that night. And uh, all of a sudden, my bashfulness totally vanished. And the Lord said, call, call her, call right now, call right now. All right. I thought, they'll just say no, and I'll hang up and go to bed. And uh, so I called the number, and a lady answered. And I said, uh, hello, is Vanita there? And she said, just a moment. And uh, so after a minute, Vanita said, hello. And uh, I said, hello, this is Jan Markison. And I'm here at Loma Linda. I, I don't know anybody. And I said, you don't want to call Porter with me, do you? <laughs> and she said, yes. Well, no, she said, that's a miracle. 
I said, what'd you say? She said, that's a miracle. And she said, I'm getting ready to leave here tomorrow. I got my suitcase all packed and I'm going to leave here because I don't know what God wants me to do. And I was pleading with the Lord, have somebody call me or something. Man. Ring. The thing rings when she said, call me or something. It was my call. That's why God didn't let me call until that moment. Mercy. And so uh, I said, yes. And I said, uh, you, you wouldn't want to call Porter with me, would you? She, she said, that's a miracle. I said, what'd you say? She said, yes, I'll call Porter with you. Praise the Lord. She had no idea who I was. I didn't know her either. But I said, I tell you what, tomorrow morning, meet me right in front of the library where they grow the roses on the bench there. I'll meet you there at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And so we did. I got there first, and I was looking. I was so wondering uh, who, what she's going to look like and all. And uh, so uh, that's the way it started. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And they have lived happily ever after, Amen. right? Amen. Well, Brother Marcus, we know that the Pope has an agenda. We understand Laudato Si. I know you're very familiar with this. You know, um, what does the book Sunday Law do? We know it exposes the papal agenda. Yes. And what's getting ready to happen in the last days. You see this poor man kissing the Pope's mm, hand. What do you yeah. think about that? Poor thing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> he said, poor thing. What religion is that, man? This, this, I don't know, but he's a, this is in Africa. Oh. But Sister White says, in the very time in which we live, the Lord has called his people and has given them a message to bear. He has called them to expose the wickedness of the man of sin yes. who has made the Sunday law a distinctive power. The perils of the last days are upon us, and in our work, we are to warn the people of the danger that they are in. Let not the solemn scenes which prophecy has revealed be left untouched. Pastor Marcus, and this is what the purpose of this book, National Sunday Law, the Great Controversy is for, so people won't worship the devil, so they won't end up Amen. in the lake of fire. That's Anything right. you want to say about that? Uh, well, we know that a fire is going to be horrible. It'll, it won't go out until, until you're totally dis gone. Uh, right. Even the tiniest bit of your body will still feel all the pain. And um, so we don't need to be, prob that probation is still open. Aren't you glad? Still open, praise God. And uh, to be converted. I, I played with everybody listening to me now. Please, come to Jesus. If God, the devil is trying to make you give up because of your guilt, I tell you this now, that Jesus loves you. Amen. The lovely Jesus died for you. And um, just make a full surrender. Say, Lord, save me. And that's all it takes. Amen. And walk with him forevermore. Amen. Now, this is a, a, one of our viewers, um, Pastor Marcus. I don't know if you know about him. This is Minister Ernest Kinsey. This was a Sunday preacher. Mm. But from reading the book National Sunday Law, he became a Sabbath keeper. Praise God. Now, this is in Michigan. Now, I want you to hear a little bit of what he said. He may be watching today. And he did a series at this non-Adventist church using the book National Sunday Law. Praise God. Let's, look at, let's listen closely. Mark of the Beast. Show y'all something. Well, let me deal with this one, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I told y'all about this. Um, still in Glen Oaks at this time. And dreaming. And I saw a pope. All these people, as far as I could see. You know. And the Lord said, that's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I woke up. Man, that's the, this is a first day minister getting a revelation from the Lord. Now listen to this. Wow. Okay, Lord. And I already had this Schofield. One of the, I love it. I don't let nobody borrow it. I'm going to show y'all something. I can't tell you how many months or a year have passed, but this is how the book came in the mail. I didn't send for it. I didn't had it over 20 years. This is the one came to me. Praise but God. this is how it came. I didn't send for it. When God wants something revealed, it shall be revealed. Amen. I told Linda to send the pastor the picture of the billboard that was put up in Alabama. Did you get it? And I talked to the pastor. I said, was that a photo shoot? He said, no, no, no. That was up. 
Do you think it's just a coincidence? <laughs> now, I'm not going to even try to cover everything. This book is too much. It's too much. You need to. Didn't the pastor tell you if you needed more books to call him? Y'all yeah. need to get this book and read it. Paul said, prove all things. This book, everything I, in this book I got in my Bible, the only thing this book does is go into more depth about the papacy. Excuse me. They did a documentary on him about, I don't know how many years ago. They say, the most powerfulest man in the world. Pope. The Holy Father. unto us a child is born a son is given his name shall be called wonderful counselor prince of peace the mighty god the everlasting father that title only belongs to god well, wait a minute now now i'm feeling good y'all y'all chew, y'all children y'all chewing in order chew mm, thank you you'll taste and see that the lord is good there's a feast of the Lord going on. That title only belongs to God, right? the Holy Father. Well, Jesus did say, call no man on earth your father, for you only have one of the fa- one of the father which is your heavenly father. Now, he went, if my dad was still alive, and I said, Pastor, I want you to meet my father. He ain't talking about that. He's giving you clues. He's giving you clues. Call no man on earth your father, for you only have one father then I told you they tried they tried to backtrack when they they interrupted the news CNN his holiness now let me say this let me say this yes yes Lord she's done some great things yes the bridegroom was hurried in her yes she 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 feeds the poor and she and she does this but Moses threw down Pharaoh threw down his rod. Mm. Two serpents. And then Moses threw down his rod. <laughs> Watch this. His serpent ate up theirs. And I'm going to say this. That's out of all the movies I've ever saw in my life. Uh, that's my favorite movie. I love it. I thank God for it. The Ten Commandments with your Brenner and Charleston Heston. And the author was Cecil, Mac- Cecil McNeil or something like that. I love it. I love it. At the end, Lord, you got me going. He said, his God. <laughs> his God. Ooh, wow. Let me get back. Let me get back. Well, let me go back to something. It's good to have a witness. One of the elders came out of the pool pit. Bishop looked at one of the elders. I don't know if it was Elder Quincy, one of the elders, and they, they came from around. And Bishop told them to go get Ernest. They urged him to the pool pit. See, people don't know the whole story. And I, I, I politely said, no. And I said, Lord, I hope Bishop don't think I was trying to be disobedient, but there was a reason. So I went home and I wrote a letter, I know in my head, and here's what I said. I'm going to paraphrase it. Greetings, Bishop, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the invite to the pool pit, but at this time, I feel that it's best that I stay out of the pool pit, and I gave him the reasons why. I said, Bishop, I don't believe in a secret rapture prior to the second coming of Christ. Therefore, anything God leads me to teach outside of you will not be a reflection towards you, nor your minister or yourself. God bless you. Love you, Bishop. That's honor. That's showing honor and dignity. See, a lot of saints don't know. So, a week had passed, and I was like, well, Lord, did he, I wonder, did he get the letter? So, I was coming around to take my tithes and offering. Good to have a witness. The whole church saw this. And uh, Bishop, that's only he can do. He motioned me to him. And here's what he said. 
It's a non-Adventist minister. Negro, I got your letter. That ain't good enough. And I said, Bishop, it all panned out. And I went on back around. But before I did, I went up in the pool pit. And I had my arms around him. And I said, this man right here taught us to book, chapter, and verse it. And he was standing, he was just, all he could do was shake his head. And that's what I, that's what I told him now. Well, that's what I do. Watch this. I may be quoting it wrong. In the church bulletin, I think it reads like as thus. We believe in the, blessed, in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God at his returning. That I'd read. That's in the bulletin. Watch this. But when you listen to Bishop Patterson, that's why I told y'all, listen. Before they show his old broadcast, he say, as we expectantly await the second coming. But wait a minute. I thought there was a difference between the second coming and the rapture. Which one is it? Y'all see where I'm going? How come Bishop Patterson didn't say, as we expectantly await the rapture of the church of God? That ain't what he said. I told you the most popular teaching is pre-rapture, pre that while I'm standing here, all y'all could just, all those who are ready, y'all could just vanish. And then the rest of the folks who weren't good enough to go got to make it in the second batch. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to say it again, recapping. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the king, the trump of God, dead in Christ shall rise first, then we, how loud remain, shall be caught up. That's the rapture scripture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. Listen to what he says here. No, oh, you on that barbecue and talk another. You welcome. Everybody else got one? Okay. Now, look at my book again. I've had it 20 years after I had the vision. They done put up a billboard in Alabama. With this, on the billboard. You seen it? You think this just a coincidence? What I say, go to page 23. Watch this. It reads as thus. Let's take a close look at this thing to make sure there's no mistake. And the dragon, who is the dragon? Who is the dragon? Thank you. Y'all, come on now, don't be scared. And the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. So Pastor Jan, the word is getting out. Praise God. Even among those. And this, he has a series on YouTube mm. where he's giving this study to this non-seven-day Adventist church. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I know you've had many stories similar to this, but look what came out just two years ago. Americans need a break. Yeah. Maybe blue laws can help. Mm. What do you think about that, Elder? Well, that's just one more little part of the the way the devil works. So just from looking at this picture, what does that suggest? It suggests Sunday rest. Yes, but is that biblical? No. Uh, biblical makes Sunday uh, uh, one of the work days. Y yes, yes. I mean, so this is very, very, very deceptive. Am I right? They call it blue laws because it was written in Virginia, mainly uh, at first on blue paper. Mm, mm, mm. So this is serious, and now we know how this is going to come. I'm not going to read the article, but the Spirit of Prophecy says in Great Controversy, page 445, when the leading churches of the United States uniting upon such points of doctrine as I held by them in common, that's the ecumenical movement, yeah. shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed the image of the Roman hierarchy mm. and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. So Pastor Markerson, should Seven Day Adventists be involved in the ecumenical movement? No. Why? Why not? They can't because the, devil, the Jesuits always work with creeping compromise. That's right. That's they work with creeping compromise. And so, you know, this is very serious. So what does the spirit of prophecy say about this? And we're going to look at a couple of things before we um, move on. Now, the spirit of prophecy tells us, listen to this. The spirit of prophecy says, quote, that the Sunday movement is now making its way in what? Darkness. And that the leaders are concealing the true issue 
And many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is tending. They are working in blindness. What do you want to say about that, Pastor? Well, I think they're willfully ignorant. They're blind, all right, but they're blind on purpose. Mm, that's right. So we know who the two major factors are. The first beast being the papacy, second beast being the United States of America. Yes. And we know that it's all going to come between the day of worship, where the Sabbath, thank God, will be the seal of the living God, which you outline in your book, and how Sunday will be the mark Amen. of the beast. And Any one, like I mentioned before, anyone going along with the Sunday law, uh, once he really goes along with it, he'll right. never, ever change. He won't go back. And those who go along, uphold uh, against the Sunday law for God's true Sabbath, they'll never, ever change. They're sealed in their foreheads. Praise the Lord. That's right. And once you're sealed, num number one, you'll never go away from it. You'll never fall away. That's right. And you, on, this might be shocking. You'll never sin again. That's right. Amen. Because the papacy Never says that again. Sunday is their mark of authority. And we know that the mark of the beast will not be enforced until the national Sunday law is passed. Right. Now, Pastor Marcus, has anybody received the mark of the beast yet? No. No. No one has yet received the mark of the beast because the testing time has not yet but come. People are moving that way. That's right. Uh, towards it. And the devil's laying a foundation, not only with the papacy taking control of every office and place in the, in the country. Uh, but also uh, m manipulating the minds of the people to go along with self and worldliness and money making and all those things. That's right. Now, Pastor Marcus, and this article came out in January 2024. How long ago was 20 2024? It's this the very uh, <laughs> year. That's right. It says, why a day of rest could help fight climate change. Does that sound kind of familiar in Ellen White's yeah, writings? that's well, right. Well, yes. Now, here's what the doozy comes. Now, who do you think that is? It looks like the devil to me. Personating uh, who? Jesus. Uh, it's the devil looking, but uh, that's not Jesus, Pastor Marcus. No, he, he won't touch the ground, but the devil will touch the ground. That's right. That's right. So we know Satan will personate Christ, and he's speaking to the leaders of the United Nations. And if this happens like that, what would happen if, in terms of the Sunday law crisis? If, oh, yeah, if the devil comes and appears as Jesus, it would greatly uh, hasten the Sunday law. Definitely. So what happens is that Sunday is not the Sabbath. Would you agree? That's right. It is not the Lord's Day. Now, we know that Saturday is the Christian Sabbath, the Lord's Day, because it is the day that Christ created, rested, and blessed. Would you agree? Yes, Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. That's right. But we know that Sunday is the papal Sabbath. That's Would you right. agree? Yeah. Sunday is the satanic Sabbath. That's right. Oh, am I right? Yes. Okay. Can I give you one more, another one? Sure. Sunday is the Luciferian Sabbath. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Sunday is the devil Sabbath. That's right. Wow. And as a day of worship, Sunday is I'll the devil's day. Go ahead. The prophet reveals that most of God's people are still in the Sunday keeping. Right. Process. And that's why I wrote this book to help us get the, hit God's people out of there yes, so right. they won't have the mark of the beast but have the seal of God. Amen. So we know that the Sunday law will be the ultimate test in the last days to where no man will be able to buy or what somebody? Sell. sell. And as Pastor Markinson says, it's going to be a great shaking in the church. So what we want to do is, is that we want to just do a quick run on showing you how close we are to the passing of this law. Now, Pastor Markinson, um, look what it says right here. Uh, this is a video of a group called Earth Sabbath. Mm, yeah. This came out in 2024. Are you sure 2024 wasn't that long ago? That's right. All right. Listen what it says Not right long here. Ago. Now, they're talking about now tomorrow on their website, tomorrow they're calling for a global Earth Sabbath march mm. where they want people all over the world to keep an Earth Sabbath. Mm. Look at this right here. Unlock the power of an Earth Sabbath. The planet really needs a weekly rest. The Earth Sabbath is a weekly respite from harmful human activities, promoting environmental sustainability and personal well-being. Observing an Earth Sabbath reduces carbon emissions, water pollution, and solid waste, contributing to the overall health of the planet. Participating in Earth Sabbath, services and activities fosters a deeper connection to nature and encourages sustainable living practices. The Earth Sabbath concept 
empowers individuals and communities to take an active role in healing and protecting our planet. EarthSabbath.world. What, what do you think about that? Doesn't that sound like a really good idea? We keep the Sabbath anyway. It's a good idea if you don't know what the Bible says. That's right. So many will be fooled, especially even the foolish virgins who are going to church on Sabbath. Many of them, uh, if, you, if they had to say why they keep the Sabbath, they don't know. Because my grandparents did it, my father and all that. But they couldn't give you anything from the Bible. They'll cave right in under the pressure. That's There's right. going to be so much pressure to go along with this law that uh, if you're not grounded in the Bible, you'll just cave in. You don't have the power to withstand it. All right. And so listen to this, Pastor Marcus. And this, this is another. That now they're promoting it for tomorrow, but there's going to be another one in July. Mm, okay. Now look at this. Now, can, can a lot of things happen between now and July? Yes. Yes, look at this. This movement is a global initiative that encourages people worldwide to give the planet a rest one day a week to reduce energy consumption and protect the environment. By observing a weekly Earth Sabbath, we can significantly reduce carbon emissions, conserve natural resources, and promote sustainable practices. This movement is inclusive and open to people from diverse backgrounds and cultures, allowing them to participate in Earth Sabbath activities based on their personal beliefs and interests. Together, we can create a global impact by encouraging... Hold on, what's the problem with it? It says unite for change. Mm -hmm. Should we as Seventh-day Adventist Pastor Marcus and unite with them? No. Why not? Because by beholding you're changed into the same image and you hang around with people that are not following the Bible and you'll end up being with them. Yeah, and it says global participation. What does global participation imply? Ecumenical movement. Wow. <laughs> With Rome being the head honcho and the pope over any, everyone, not knowing who's controlling him. But so, but now listen to this right here. Global participation. They want the earth to keep one day mm -hmm. as the Sabbath. We know what, what day, day. What day will that be in the last days, the, Pastor Marcus? The day of the sun. That's right. And who benefits the most from the earth's Sabbath? Do seven-day Adventists that already keep the Sabbath benefit from this, or who the benefits the most, most from it? Most they benefit is Rome. Mm, why do you say that? Because it's her mark. It's the mark Mercy. of her authority. Come on. Uh, as she has power uh, as God and puts himself above the law of God. Mercy. Listen to this. That's the mark. Worldwide participation in this cause. On July 20th, 2024, a global Earth Sabbath march is planned to raise awareness and demand action towards establishing a weekly Earth Sabbath day. Did you hear that, Pastor Marcus? Yeah. What does that sound like? It sounds pretty bad to me. <laughs> does it sound like we need to get some more national Sunday laws? Because it's only 8 billion people, and we have only 51 million national Sunday laws. That's Don't right. you think we need to get more out? Yes, we do. We're going to continue doing that until angels will do a work that men might have done, Sister White said. The angels will do most of the work. They know all those languages, and they yes. can just be, a, bullets don't bother them anything. Handcuff them, put them in the back of the police car, and when they get to the station, they said, all right, you can get out now, and there's nobody in there. That's right. <laughs> hey, man. So what happens is, they're dem demand it says, demand an Earth Sabbath. What does that sound like, Pastor Markison? It sounds like the beast. Power. Now, how do you now the, 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 on the website they, they say two things? They say, well, we're not trying to get a law legislated, but if you demand a weekly day of rest, right. how do you demand means? You, you see, they need to brainwash the people, right? So they can't come on too strong at first, but this thing will get stronger and stronger until people get used to it, mm. and until finally they'll say, well, we we've got to do more, we've got to have a law, and so they'll finally get it. Wow. Meanwhile, God's people will be protesting, as we're called Protestants, and um, a big fight is coming between Rome and the kingdom of the devil and Jesus and the kingdom of heaven. Yes, indeed. And so you heard what's going to happen on Monday, right, on April 8th? Uh, what's going to happen? About the solar eclipse. Have you heard anything? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. What do you think about that? Because people keep asking me to talk about that. Well, the world is building it up for some reason. Uh, it's no miracle or anything. It's been happening uh, so many, uh, you know, here and now and then for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yes. But for some strange reason, they're pushing it, I believe, to hopefully get this global Earth Sabbath with a global Earth March. Mercy. And so guess what I found out today? 
Let's go to the screen, Brother Richard. Let me show you what just came out. Do you know they say that Sunday is a perfect day for eclipse of practice? Interesting, yeah. <laughs> That's it. And when did this article came out? It came out April 6, 2024. How long ago was April 6, 2024, Pastor Markinson? Well, it, right now it's April 6 today. It means it came out today. Today, yeah. So it says Sunday is a perfect day for eclipse practice. What do you, what do you think about that, Pastor Markinson? I think that the devil is trying to do all he can to brainwash the people to get used to this thing and get a national Sunday law. That's the bottom line. And so this is Enforce serious. the mark of the beast. Yes, but see, now we have, back in Ellen White's time was the National Reform Association. Mm -hmm. Now it's Christian nationalism. What do yeah. you think about that? Christian nationalism. Yes. That's a big part of the ecumenical movement. They don't realize that Pope is the head of the whole thing. Yes. And all the hierarchy of Rome. Oh, yes, indeed. And so Christian nationalism, I want to show you something that you may know, may know about. I'm just typing it up. And anybody can type it up on the Internet. And we're going to show you something. And this is the Pastor Marcus. And now this is a man that wrote um, a book on Christian nationalism. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to hear what he says about Sunday laws. Listen to this right here. All right. I hate this. It's the only thing I hate about YouTube. All right. All right. All right. Okay, let me skip it. Okay. Listen to what he says here. The gospel, nor the one worships God in heart, but it can create the best outward conditions for one to conduct undisturbed and focused worship of God. Thus, in addition to ensuring justice in our civil relations, civil authority can regulate the Sabbath day, for example, to remove those daily cares and concerns that distract us from Sunday worship. Though often def One more time nor the one worships God in heart, but it can create the best outward conditions for one to conduct undisturbed and focused worship of God. Thus, in addition to ensuring justice in our civil relations, civil authority can regulate the Sabbath day, for example, to remove those daily cares and concerns that distract us from Sunday worship. Though often defined by its abuse... What do you think about what you just saw? It's a br part of a brainwashing program, and I can see the devil is redoubling his efforts to brainwash the people and destroy them. That's right. And, who, and guess what's going on in November? What's going to happen in November? My wife's birthday. All right. <laughs> Besides your wife's birthday. <laughs> Besides your... You can take it off the screen for a second, Brother Richard. Um, uh, you can take it off the well, screen. Well, that's all I was thinking about. Uh, well, to the, this is 2024. What happens every four years? Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> What's, uh, so what's, what's, happening, what's happening this year? Well, there's a big fight over that, that's for sure. And we see Rome working, working through these wicked people to destroy as much good as they can and to take over control of this whole country. Right, because see, for the last several years, we've seen things go so far to the left. Mm -hmm. And now, the, the, it's, it's, the yeah, it, yes, and it's, it's causing the image of the beast movement people right. to say, we don't, we don't want any of this, and they're taking it to the right now. But yes. what do you think about that? Well, I've been saying that for many years. Right. But uh, it goes back and forth, back and forth. Like in the days of Reagan, it was one way, and then it, with the other, it was another way. But now it, uh, it's been to the left so much that people are open, their eyes are open concerning the right. horrible parts of, of it. And now it'll swing to the right, and it may never swing back again. Mercy. After right now, I can, can't see how it could swing back again. again. So you, you think that, this is, that we're close to it? Very, very, very uh, um, good clue that we are close to it while it's in the right. Is it years or is it months? Yeah, I've been saying also that <laughs> if God were to reveal how many months we have until these things happen, a child could count that That's high. right. Yes, this is how serious it is, and God keeps pushing it back. And I'm, I'm not tell, I would never tell anyone, even when I think the Sunday law is coming, I don't do that. You don't know. But I just say that we look at all of these factors, and the factors that you're just showing us right now, uh, the devil is... Uh, uh, getting back on his saddle again to ride to victory. That's right. So let's go back to the screen. Um, we want to show you something that, that the Republican has their candidate, and his name is Donald J. Trump, who's been saying a lot of things about Christian nationalism. Donald Trump told supporters last week that Joe Biden desecrated Easter Sunday. 
And he did yeah. because he made that Sunday a na like a transgender day of, of expression. Mm -hmm. And it says, and that election day 2024, he says, will be Christian Visibility Day. Mm -hmm. And there it is right there. Yeah. Christian Visibility Day. What do you think about that? I'm going to take a picture of it. And then I'm going to give you my... There. Okay. Um, I don't get into politics. That's right. At all. And, but uh, we can talk about principles. And uh, Sister White talked about President Lincoln and things like that. But anyway, we're very respectful of all authority. Mm -hmm. uh, but with things like what you're just showing me right now, Christian Visibility Day, mm. November 5, 2024, everyone knows what happens on November 5. Right. And then above it, it says Christian Visibility Day, and everybody knows that is a, a rebuttal of the queer uh, Visibility yes, Day. Right. And so uh, that w that's a good thing. Of he is, he's hoping that that will help him get elected. That's right. That stance. That's right. Donald Trump is once again targeting Christian communities during his political campaign because of the significant political influence these groups have in our nation. By appealing to Christians, politicals aim to secure their support and votes. By aligning political campaigns with Christian rhetoric, this strategy not only helps in mobilizing people of faith to vote, but also gets the perception that a candidate is morally upright, trustworthy, and approved by God. What, what, what do you think about that? Uh, reiterate that real uh, and briefly. By, okay. By aligning political campaigns with Christian rhetoric, this strategy, in other words, talking about God, mm -hmm would help people of faith to vote, but it gives the perception that the candidate who's doing this mm -hmm. is they're morally upright, trustworthy, and approved by God. Yeah, well, that's just very similar to what Jerry Falwell was pushing back yes. in the 80s. Yes, 80s, that's right. They even went into the churches and registered people to vote right in church. Wow. And that's a, a real union of church, church and, and state. state. In my latest newsletter that I just finished, uh, uh, we see that that th thing principle is happening right now. That's right. It says, ultimately, politicians believe that by playing the religious card, they will be able to secure victory at the polls and obtain a competitive advantage in the elections. And listen to this right here. Can I just read to you what he said? Yes. Oh, not read. Can I just let you hear it yourself? Okay. All right. We're going to win the White House and we are going to save our country. We're going to save our country. We're going to save our country. Save our country from what? Well, from the wicked people, I guess. But I, uh, I'm sure that uh, save it from his enemy, who, whoever he's fighting against. But Joe Biden's a Roman Catholic. I know it. So who, who, is, who is his boss? Who's boss? Jo uh, Joe, Joe Biden. Well, the Pope is his boss. He, he can, must get orders from the Vatican. Uh, otherwise, see, everything that Rome wants to be done in this country he's doing right to his it's no a secret that rome wants to regain control of the world restart persecution and undo all that protestantism has done that's in great controversy 565 and 566 and the, we see that they're doing that where they're working to regain control of the world especially the united states let's look on page 580 the roman catholic church oh, this is the reason why even if i did have, would have voted for a candidate i would have definitely not voted for Biden. I didn't vote for no candidate, but it says right here, it says, the Roman Catholic Church with all its ramifications throughout the world forms one vast organization under the control and design to serve the interests of the papal see. That's right. So listen to this, it's millions of communicants in every country on the globe are instructed to hold themselves as bound in allegiance to the Pope. Yeah. Well, somebody says, well, Pope Joe, but Joe Biden's not really a strict Catholic, but what would you say if somebody told you that? Well, he's taking orders from them. However strict or liberal he is, he's, he's following orders. And I believe that uh, just like when they pick certain cardinals yes. uh, f for, to see which one's going to be Pope, one becomes Pope, the other cardinals mysteriously die. Mm. The ex-Jesuit priest, his name is Alberto Rivera, he revealed that every election of a pope, cardinals die all the time. Wow. They kill them, put them to death, just like the uh, queen bee puts the drone to death when, when, uh, and, and kills the other queen. Man, that's serious. It says... It says, whatever their nationality or their government, she was just being kind there. Mm -hmm. 
they are to regard the authority of the church mm -hmm. as above all other. Though they may take the oath pledging their loyalty to the state, yet back of this lies the vow of obedience to Rome, absolving them from every pledge inimical to their interests. Yeah. What do you want to say about that? I don't have much to add to it. It's just showing that, that Rome is really, truly working to regain control of the whole world. And they're working to restart persecution and undo all that Protestantism has done. They're doing it. So can you, let me ask, I know you had um, Jesuit Alberto Rivera. You've interviewed him before. Yeah. Just from talking to him to now, do you believe that the Jesuits' work has been completed? No. Really? Uh, they've got a lot, a lot of work to do, that's for sure. Really? They're uh, in about every office of the land, and um, they're in all the churches. Um, when I was speaking in different churches, every time I would go and speak there, at, say for Sabbath to church, 11 o'clock, I'd walk down the middle aisle after the sermon, and as I would get down a ways, a person that I was passing him, he would go like this. Do what? Make a cross sign? He revealed who he was. Uh, he was a Catholic, and he did that to protect himself from Protestants. But they're, they're planted in the, every church, and they're very kind, sweet people, and they, their mission is to win confidence. And once they win the confidence, giving flowers to the ladies, and, and they just are so sweet people, win all their confidence, and nothing bad happens as long as the pastor is just mamby-pamby and just right. speeches love and, and doesn't expose, and doesn't talk about Revelation or Daniel. If he stays away from those two books, everything's all right. Mm. They just gather information about this was and that person, and they report it to the different uh, divisions of Rome. And uh, they're just taking uh, notes here and there. But if the pastor of the Protestant church starts explaining the meaning of Daniel and Revelation, then right. they must be hit. And I, uh, Alberta revealed how he was doing this himself as a younger Jesuit. And he was assigned to different churches. Now, the Jesuits, when they're young men, they... Uh, Hold on a second. You can take it off the screen, Brother Richard. Take it off the screen. Go ahead. When they're young men... They are trained, of course, and uh, they, they change their name many times mm. to get a good-sounding name. And they, then each Jesuit is not only assigned to learn everything about one church, mm. all the Protestant churches are put in groups. Mm. Like uh, the, they, he said the Seventh-day Adventists are in the group with the Nazarenes. And I didn't catch any other groups there with, but each group, Baptist, Methodist, so, so forth, they're put in groups of churches that have something in common. And so the, each Jesuit is not only taught one church, he's, he has to memorize everything about Man. every church so he knows more about you, the, your beliefs than you do. Man. And um, uh, that's before he ever comes to a Protestant church. Uh, but when, when he learns all this about the, what his goal is as a Protestant, I mean, yeah, as a Protestant, then he will join one of the churches in that group and um, just come in out of nowhere and just a nice, sweet person. And he's in there for a number of years. No one would suspect him of anything, and he right. didn't cause any problem at all unless the pastor or the members start teaching Daniel and Revelation. If that happens, Alberta said that what he did when this happened in the church he was at uh, they must uh, destroy the pastor's influence. Mm. They don't have to kill him, just destroy his influence. Yeah. So he'll have to move away or uh, people won't believe him anymore. And so that's what they do. And so uh, Alberta, what he did was he called the pastor on the phone in the middle of the night. And uh, the pastor answered. And Alberta was very, uh, talked very excitedly. He said, oh, uh, pastor, he said, you got to come down to the hospital. Uh, one of your church members is, is sick and just got into the hospital. And so uh, the pastor, of course, knows, he told him what hospital it is. And so he said, all right. He got dressed. He got in his car. Now, uh, Alberta knew what route he would take to that hospital. And so he and a woman unknown to the pastor were there waiting for the pastor to drive by 
And as he was driving along, Alberta and this woman come out in the road. And uh, then, you know, on the side of the road, and, and they're waving, you know, different things. So the pastor stops and uh, uh, talks to the lady and to Alberto. And, and all of a sudden, and not much after they started talking, the lady um, walks over to Alberto, rips her shirt open, her skirt open. Alberta takes their picture together with her, her blouse open like that. And that's all he needs. And so he just makes copies of that picture and sends it all around to all the church members and the pastor is destroyed. But you might say, are they mean enough to do something like that? They're mean enough to do a lot more than that, as you can read in, in the their great Jesuit controversy oath, right. uh, or other things like that. And that the end justifies the means. The means. That's right. And that's very serious. I, now, I'm just thankful we have the lovely Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? We don't have to be afraid of these people at all. All we need to do is cling to Jesus, fill our minds with the word of God, and work to get the three angels' message to the people, and we'll have no problem, those poor demon-possessed demon people. Amen. Let's go to the um, screen, Brother, brother uh, Richard. I want to show you something. Now, all right. So look at that right there. This is, um, this is where he was um, trained to go into different churches mm -hmm. and to infiltrate and this infiltration is not only taking place in churches but in governments yeah that's right now pastor Arkinson, what's wrong with this picture these are one two three four five six seven supreme court justices mm -hmm. they they took an oath to the constitution but there's a problem well two of them are missing two of them are well look, look at the religion amy barrett catholic Samuel oh, yeah. Alito Catholic. That's Everybody's right. Catholic. Catholic. Now, Neil Gersich was raised, I think he went to Catholic school, but they say he's an Anglican, but we can put him in there. Yeah. So you have seven Supreme Court justices Catholic. out of nine That's right. that are Roman Catholic, and they said that this is the first time that there are no Protestants on the Supreme Court. What does that mean? Does that mean anything? Yeah, it means that, that uh, Rome is advancing undercover faster than most people would ever dream. And it's all leading to Sunday rest. Enough Am I right? Of the, yes. Enforcement of the mark of the beast. That's right. Now listen to this, Pastor Markison. Um, I found this on the internet. It's called My American Dream. This is called from the Catholic Knighthood. You see the Statue of Liberty on here? Mm -hmm. But what do you see in that next picture? It should be the, a devil called Mary. Mercy. Look what it says. This person said, My American Dream mm -hmm. is that one day the United States of America will become a Catholic nation. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church in the United States has made great contributions to this very nation. And you simply cannot ignore this very fact. Converting this nation as well as its non-Catholic citizens to the Catholic faith should be and must be one of our most important duties that we must accomplish, especially in the times which we are living. We need to do our part to bring others to the true church of Jesus Christ, and that true church is the only Catholic church. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. Yes. And look what they're doing to Seventh-day Adventists, Heretic of the Week, Ellen G. White. Mm. What do you think about that? Well, that's the way the devil works. We can know that this is he's going to work even more. Uh, the prophet said that <coughs> Adventists have been an obscure group. That's right. Thought that, uh, too insignificant to pay any attention to. But she said that things will change. We will become known around the whole world. Right. And so uh, I hope they're not looking mainly at the foolish virgins, but right. really glad to get a glimpse of the wise virgins. That's right. And I know that you, and your time is precious, so we just want to um, go towards the end. Um, even the, Now listen to this right here. Now this is Donald Trump. I'm sorry. This is Donald Trump. Listen what he says. And what the in when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day. Such total disrespect to Christians and November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Let's call it Christian Visibility Day. Huh? What do you think about that, Pastor Marcuson? Well, that was a very good 
thing that he did as far as his own election. Woo! It will help get the Christians on his side, and that's a huge block of many, many millions of people. Yes. And so that was a political speech. Yes. And uh, but it's in the hands of God. Whatever happens. Yes. And look at this next one. You who Yahoo. Have you heard of Yahoo before? Yes. Yahoo Finance asks, who doesn't love Sunday, the last day of the week? Mm, yeah. Do you see that, Pastor Marcuson? Yeah, we see it. Do you see that as robotic stores are forced to close on Sundays? Look at mm -hmm. that right there. Hold on. Who doesn't love Sundays, the last day of the week? You know what I found out, Pastor Marcuson? What? Um, when you type up, what is the seventh day of the week? Watch this right here. Watch this right here. Now, you know what day is the seventh day of the week. That's why we call ourselves Seven Day Adventist. That's right. But listen to this. When you go to Google, and Google's supposed to know what they're talking about, look this right here. When you type up what is the seventh day of the week, mm -hmm. it says, hold up, Sunday. Uh -huh. Sunday. Now, this one, what is the seventh? In order to do that, they've got to... Uh, illegally manipulate the the time of the calendar. They can't yeah, exactly. really do that. They've got to fool people in order to do that. Look, what is the seven day of the week? ISO A six oh one, the international standard A six oh one for representation of dates and times mm -hmm. states that Sunday is the last and seventh day of the week. Pastor Marcus, isn't That's that a, very diabolical? It's a lie too. It is a lie. It is a lie. It, There's so many lies you can't hardly know what is telling the truth, especially what we see on TV. Mm-hmm. And what's so deep about it is, and Pastor Markison, I want to show you something here, and I want to tell you, now, this, that means that Sunday is the international first day of the week, and look what I found out. Now, this is on Google, but listen to this right here. I'm going to show you a picture, and I'm going to ask what you think about this. Okay. Did you know that where America is, where it's blue and all over the countries, that's where Saturday is the seventh day. That's right. But where you see part of South America, mm -hmm. most of Africa, all of Russia and China, mm -hmm. these are the countries where Sunday is the seventh day. Yeah, I saw that the, the other day. What do you think about that? I think it's very tricky, isn't it? It is very and tricky. you've got to look for yourself. Like, if they would look at a... You can take it off the screen, Richard. They, if they would look at a dictionary or an encyclopedia... They all say Saturday, the seventh day of the week. So those are th things that can't be manipulated because it was printed years ago and they can't change that. But people that don't read or study are going to be fooled by it. Yes, indeed. So can you say that this is a brainwashing technique? Yes, it is. It's lots of brainwashing going on. Wow. Man, I tell you, they say that the truth is stranger than? Fiction, yeah. You know, I'm thankful go ahead. for the 144,000. And you can be one of them. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You'll be willing to stand for the truth or the heavens fall. Now let's go back to the screen. I'm not going to read these articles because I know your time is short. Look at this right here. Let's go to the next one. It says, Good Housekeeping Magazine. I think you may have heard about it before. Claims that Sundays are the best time of the week to relax, to find peace, and reclaim our lives. Look at that. Mm -hmm. um, how a Sunday reset can make you more productive. That was on April 3rd, 2003. How long ago was April 3rd, 2003? 2024, excuse me. April 3, 2024. How long ago was April 3, 2024? Not long ago, that's for sure. That was three days ago. Yeah. Look at that. How a Sunday reset can make you more productive. Hmm. I mean, it seems like, you know, it's making Sunday look like it's a really a day to be desired. I know it. Doesn't that kind of remind us how it came to pass in the great controversy when Ellen White talked about how Sunday came into the church? And you know, uh, who's behind that thing? There's always somebody behind it. I mm. uh, like these uh, riots. Right. Somebody has to finance it. Somebody has to lead out in it. There's a lot that has to go on before it ever starts. And, I know, and they finance it and give people, they pay money to do it. And Rome is a, a source of the whole thing. And I learned from Karen Hudis that the money, not all, but a lot of the money coming into the IRS is sent to the Bank of the Vatican, the Mercy. Vatican Bank. And that's how they get money to finance all these wars, riots, and corruption that they're, that they're financing. Mercy, that's something else, and that's deep. Look at this one right here. New Sunday lawn care calls people to switch to Sunday. Hmm. Look at that. The Sunday, uh, would look you at bring that. it back one more time? New Sunday lawn care calls on people to switch to Sunday. Interesting. And look what it says, the Sunday way. Uh -huh. Support the whole ecosystem 
for a beauty. You see how the devil, it's, it's a product called Sunday. Yeah. And it got the sun on top of the you. The, the devil knows that people are not studying the Bible anymore. They can, they can be fooled. Wow, this is deep. Even the Seventh-day Adventist foolish virgins can be fooled. Yeah, exactly. And it's so deep. And so a lot of things are happening in this world. And I'm telling you, this thing is real. And while this is happening, the devil wants us as Seventh-day Adventists to think that this is totally harmless. You can take it off the screen, Brother Richard. What do you want to say about that, Pastor? I agree. And... Um, uh, maybe we better uh, close for the people that need to eat supper. Okay, give me just 15 more minutes. But uh, okay. what you said is the truth. Yes, indeed. Yes. And so, yeah, this is so deep. And so, you know, a lot of things are happening in this world's history. And uh, I tell you, I don't know how much longer it's going to be. But one day, Pastor Jan, you're going to go to sleep and you're going to wake up and it's going to be here. Yeah. And so we want to just I tell you, this thing is real. So, you know, as we come to a uh, as we wind this down, you know, we've been putting bill. Let's go to the screen, Pastor Jan. And we're going to invite somebody else to come up in a minute. We're putting up billboards, Pastor Jan, um, all over the country. And we want to thank all those who are supporting it. And um, these are some of the billboards that are going out. And um, this is one that we put out. This is what Andy Roman made for me. And this is. In, po in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. And so we're, we're just giving awareness. Uh -huh. We're just telling people about it. And I, I think that, you know, um, you know, and we're using your book and we thank you for allowing us, you know, we just thank you for this book being written. We're just calling awareness Amen. to this. And we're just asking a question. Is Sunday the Lord's day or the mark of the beast? It's the devil's day. That's right. And did you know that the mark of the beast will be worship on Sunday? We, we're having it yes. here and we're putting it in different places all over the earth. Because let me tell you, Pastor Marcus, this was, this was one of the ones that we put up before this one. Mm, yeah. And then, but look at this one right here. The devil's trying to counteract it. Do you, what do you think about this billboard, Pastor Marcus? It says Sunday worship is biblical. Uh, it says uh, 91 points over. No, it's not biblical. Not at all. Right. And so look at this. Great cities attract great leaders. I've had Adventists tell me we, should, we shouldn't do this. Well, but look what the papacy is doing. Well, well, the, the prophet says that there's a certain class of conservative people that are trying to hold back the three, third angel's message, right. hold it back. Uh, but they can't hold it back too long because God is in it and he's going to finish it and cut it short. He's going to cut it short. And we're going to bring our special guest up in just a minute to, to, to somebody you know very well. But look at this right here. Pastor Marcus, and, I mean, look what the papacy's doing. They're putting their billboards up. Mm -hmm. This is promoting spiritualism. Mm -hmm. I have come to tell the world who that God exists. Who is that person on that billboard? It's the devil. That's right. Look at this. I mean, even the Muslim countries are accepting the papacy. Yeah. The whole world right. is wondering after the beast. Amen. Look at this one right here. Want world peace? But what if the Bible say when they shall say peace and safety, right. what's going to happen? There'll be no peace. There'll be no peace. And then look at this right here. Behold thy mother. Thy mother the devil. Mercy. Seek for her help. Oh. And guess what? All these world leaders yeah. are joining together with the pope. Well, let's close on a positive thing. Oh, hold on. Jesus is going to That's win. right. That's right. Now, let's take it off the screen right here because we have somebody that I would, you know, we've, we've, we've often heard Pastor Markison, but I have never heard from Sweet Vanita. And we're going to ask for your precious wife to come on up. Let's give her a hearty amen. 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 You can sit, keep sitting down, Pastor Markison. Okay. We're going to have your wife sit right here. Amen. 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 Sweet Vanita, have mercy. Amen. A amen. Hold on. Hold on one second. How long have you and your husband been married? I didn't know he was going to do this, but I'm happy to say it'll be 50 years m this next month, May the 4th. Amen. 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 And so we've heard from your husband, but um, I know you work behind the scenes. How is it, um, you know, pushing these books out? It, you know, just... What do you want us to know about you and just the work you do with supporting your husband's ministry? I would say some of my greatest joys are <clears throat> giving uh, the Sunday Law book out. And recently, a church gave me $500 to give out the great controversies as well. So I have 500 of them to give out. But I love 
picking a small town, although the last town I covered myself, I did have a little help once in a while, was in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And I, would, I, I, I think it was about 37,000 uh, population. But uh, on the 4th of July, I bought just uh, maybe a dollar decoration ahead of time, of course, <clears throat> that had a heart shape with a red, white, and blue. And uh, I had a flag sticking out the back. And at this time, I covered even more by uh, going slowly down a lot of the streets. And I think I've done as much as, well, no, one day I did actually a 1,000 books. And I, to this day, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> but, but I will do them on the doorsteps as well as opening the window on the right side of the car and practicing. I do practice shooting a ball for that reason, but uh, shooting these, you gotta, if it's a windward side, of course I take this side, and I'm driving slowly to get them right down the driveway. You don't do that in country roads, or if it's raining, you have to pray about the weather and do it yes. right. But so there are different ways of doing it. Right under the mailbox is good too. But mm. you know they're going to get it. We may <laughs> not do the same place all the time, but but of course my favorite would be right on the doorstep. But even since I've been here, before we came here at four o'clock, I told them I gave all, all my Sunday law books I had. But I found that I did have more that I, I said, oh, I didn't know I had those. So I, there were two little boys down the street in, um, what is the next town down south on 65, uh, Elk, E-L-K. Elk, Elkton? Uh, uh, anyway, I found two little boys, and they helped me get all these trailers there. And, and, and I gave them... Uh, the books, and we've, we did all those. I have something important. I, I, ahead, I, I love to give out literature. Amen. And I, like to, I love to get out this book. I just remembered I took a box. In the box, there's 100 books. Yes. And I put it not in this foyer, but the foyer to the left, there, yes. the middle one. I put it right under the table there, and all of these books are for you, free. Uh, just how, take them. How can we get some more? What would you say? How can we get some more? I, so How can we get some more books? Oh, get them some more. All you have to do is uh, write my office or call. You can use a credit card if you want. Okay, good. And they'll send them right to you. Uh, we have, as you read the, sun, the uh, newsletter, it gives different suggested donations uh, for a thousand, for a hundred, and some people even got many, many more whole pallets of them. It's over five thousand, and they send them overseas. But anyway, God is good, and uh, so. Uh, Everyone can get at least one or two, whatever, until they're gone. We're not going to take any home with us. And the best thing I know to do is put it uh, on a doorstep. I put it face down. Mm. Uh, so that's really better in a way because uh, they don't know what it is. Mm. They have no idea, but they know they're not going to leave it there. Right. And so they pick it up. This is in their doorstep. And they, they, go, down, they go in the house. Reading it just like this. I know because I've been over there and watched them. <laughs> it gives you a lot of joy. And uh, I put them under the uh, uh, door handle of the car. And, uh, and I, I leave. See, I'm very bashful. So I did this for bashful people. You could do this too. And so the people come and to open their door. And what is this? And so they pick it up and they throw it into the, the car and they drive away. Well, when they get home, they have the three angels' messages. Yes. And, uh, a, a bashful yes. boy can do that, or a girl. Yes. So yes. anyway, that getting it to the people in a way that they don't know where it what came from. That's the best. That way, they have no prejudice and no fear. Now, I, your wife's going to say something, and I'm going to have you close out with Jesus. Okay. I, yes. I, I pray ahead. that if they, people need to be blind and not see me put it there, that they will be blinded. I pray that God will take care of all the circumstances and I claim the promise Isaiah 55 11 that his word will not return unto him void but it will accomplish yes. that which he pleases. So the, wherever the truth is God will guard it. Amen. And uh, uh, two of my favorite stories, <laughs> I can't believe I did it, but anyway through the years different things uh, 
I hope I'm not wrong, but it is the truth. Uh, if a church door is open, I actually slip it in and put it on a chair. That's right. I, I watch where I'm, where I'm going and which door. I've been doing this today and since we've been here. Amen. Praise but, the Lord. But um, one of my favorite th times was, and I believe Jan was in the car. This was back in Illinois this time. But uh, evidently in one of these Protestant churches out in the country toward where a place we like to hike, I always keep literature in the car for the first place, you have to have it available, uh, is, uh, anyway, we were going down uh, the road, and, and it looked like they were having evangelistic meetings, and I, <laughs> you got to pray over that when there's people already there, but I, <laughs> I think I almost, I don't usually do this, but I think I almost had a whole box because I thought, oh, look at all these people here. And so I came to the door. Of course, I'm praying. I do things that are almost foolish. But if you're praying, God will use these things. So I have almost a box of books is my memory. And they thought, oh, thank you. And I believe they thought I was the Parliament. evangelist wife. <laughs> and so they got me a box of books again. Amen. But, but listen to this another time. I pray real hard if I walk into a Sunday church That's right. but I have actually been to a Sunday church and I pray real hard because you tremble because God yes. doesn't want us to be where error is taught but I've actually sat down I don't remember the name of the church but it was a Sunday church and and uh, because I sat in there <laughs> uh, that was unusual and I listened to the preacher like everybody did he let me put in the middle table right between the really? pews uh, us two stacks of Sunday law books. Praise the Lord. Now that, that's going about as far as you can go, but it happened. Amen. It happened. Amen. <laughs> so, Pastor Markison, how important is Jesus to us in this end time? He's all in all. Amen. Amen. All all. Amen. Well, we want to say thank you very much. And hold on, don't go nowhere, sweet Finita. And we don't go nowhere. We want to say thank you. Let's give him a hearty amen. We want to thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for having Amen. Me. We just thank God for, uh, for you coming here. We want to just say we really appreciate um, this ministry and just want to let you know from the bottom of my heart that we are appreciative of just allowing the Lord, allowing you to be used by God and getting a book out that has won so many people to Jesus and brought so many people to the God truth. God gets and all the credit. Oh, God, oh, God gets <laughs> all the credit. Amen. And, we, and, I, and I saw them two weeks ago at in, um, College Dale. And I did ask him before, can you come preach for us at State Line? And he told me, kind, and so he says in such a kind way, you can't be upset with him. But, you know, he's in retirement. You, you have a seat, have a seat. We, we, no, have, I gotta go. Oh, you gotta go. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Reason <laughs> no why I just problem. wanna just be considerate of no you. But problem. anyway, we wanna thank him for coming. And can we have a word of prayer? For, can we have a word of prayer Amen. for you and your wife? Amen. Can we, can we kneel? Can yeah, we, let's kneel. Kneel, kneel. All right, all right. I know you got to go. Amen. But we're thankful that you're here. Amen. Amen. And we have something for you, a gift for oh, you. Thank you. Father in heaven, we thank you for Pastor Marcus and his wife for being here with us on the Sunday Law Update. And I want to pray that may somebody be saved today Amen. as a result of this agency. Father God, we don't know when the Sunday Law is coming, but we want to pray that you would hide us in Christ, Amen. Lord. And please forgive us of our sins and come into our hearts. Amen. Bless the Marcuses with safe traveling mercies. And if we don't see them here again in State Line, may we see each other in the kingdom made new. Amen. And want to pray for the person that I gave us on the law book to yesterday. Please bring him Amen. and all of his friends into this truth. Amen. And give us safe traveling mercies as we end this on the law update in Jesus' amen. name. Amen. amen. And amen. I know they have to go, but we want to just wish God's blessings on every one of you. And we'll see you next week for another Sunday Law Update. God bless you. Never be ashamed Never of the truth. Amen. Um, amen. God bless you, sister. Amen. Amen. God bless 73 to 75. Oh, could be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Do you remember Stephen D. Lewis? Who? Stephen D. Lewis. Yes.